Hello and cheers and welcome back to Chicago Reacts. This is another Bartender Reacts video because I like them. I, you know, these, these don't do super great, but I have fun with them every single time. So I'm going to do it and you can't stop me. Um, today it is another how to drink video. It is eight horrible drinks ordered by horrible people. I'm very excited for it. So in order for me to ha have fun with this video, I have created myself a little old fashioned. I'm going to smoke it. It's always fun to do this. I always love doing this a lot. I've put cherry wood in here. Um, I've also got Tullamore Dew, uh, because I do love me some Tully and I've also got black walnut bitters, and just a hint of sample syrup. Um, if you have a chance to do some like cool syrups, by the way, um, like fig syrup is super good. Just like, there's lots of different kinds of syrups you can do. Everyone just kind of goes straight with simple syrup every single time. And currently, admittedly, that is what I have at my house. But there's some really cool syrups you can do, you guys. And it really, really can change everything about a drink. Um, so here it is, it's smoking. Look at it go. Um, I'll just let that, let that let that sit for a little while. Um, anyway, I've been enjoying this. Whenever, whenever he tells us about these horrible drinks that people have ordered, I'm like, yes, please. <laughs> I vibe. I vibe with thee. Um, <laughs> can't even imagine <laughs> some of the stuff that comes out that people come up with, but you know, my taste is not everyone's taste. Some people have ruined their taste buds. And so now all that they like is stuff that is horrible. And I get to judge them for it with help from the lovely, lovely folks at How to Drink. So I don't want to waste any more time. I'm looking forward to this. Let us begin. Meredith and I, we keep an eye on the internet and we look for people who post receipts with weird stuff in them. And uh, then I make them. And that's what the customer is always wrong is all about on How to Drink. Ah, I'm just going to try to figure out which one am I doing. I'm going to do, what is, what is, what is that? That's the one I'm going to do first. This is a margarita made with Casamigo Silver decaf. We're going to need an ounce of lime juice. All right, there we go. An equal measure of Cointreau. Okay. All right. And... Two ounces of Casamigos. I had a friend the other day. I was like, oh my God, I can never, I do not trust you to make any drinks ever again because he thought, he was like, he was asked to make a margarita. It's rum. I was like, N no, <laughs> you've been working at a restaurant with a bar for over a year now. And you think a margarita comes with rum. You've, we have a margarita on the menu. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing to people? Our lime, we got our tequila, we've got our Cointro, we need our decaffeinated coffee, Folgers. The best part of waking up is Folgers okay. in your cup. How much decaffeinated coffee is appropriate in a margarita? I don't know, two bar spoons? Look at those Folgers crystals. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> smells like coffee, smells good, Okay. honestly. I think when you use I'm trying to think instant coffee in a cocktail, you should dry shake first. I mean, I'm basing it off of the idea that like you want to give that coffee a little extra time to dissolve. Okay. I mean, hey. I I just can't like having coffee with your margarita. It's the because like tequila with coffee, that's fine. Like printing coffee in your cocktail, totally okay. Like that's that's good. That can be really really good. I just can't imagine it with. It's the lime, I think, that's throwing, and the lime that's throwing me off. It might be a little bit the tequila, too, but, like, definitely the lime. Yeah, that worked pretty good. It smells nice. Okay. The orange and the coffee are, they smell nice. See, the orange and the coffee nice would smell, smell nice. That would be good. A little bit worried this might actually be an okay drink. I don't know. Put that guy on the rim of the glass. There you go. It's, it's the lime that's messing me up. Our decaffeinated margarita right in there. I'm going to make a bet that this isn't so bad. Let's see. Ugh, I was wrong. <laughs> worse than I was prepared for. It truly tastes like puking in your mouth. 
<laughs> it's so bitterly acidic at its finish. It is bad. <laughs> Xenomorph juice. Yeah. I have a job to do. It starts out orange, bitter, tart, and then that passes <laughs> straight through anything that was pleasant. Really briefly, right here, there's like a little bit of a moment where it comes up for air. It never really tastes like coffee. It kind of smells like coffee. And then it goes down into Bile Town. It is, that is bad. This customer was wrong. The only Shame. possible thought that I have is what if I added sugar to it? Like if I sweetened it up? Because one, Cointreau is really dry in terms of the triple sec. Um, like a dry Curacao or a Grand Marnier would be a lot sweeter. Two, a lot of people do add some simple to their margaritas. Like that's not an uncommon yes, thing. Yes, uh, we used to do that at one of the, the places. It would be like a half an ounce of simple syrup in there. One of the places I used to work, we added simple to it. And here we it. go with our decaffeinated margarita. The simple helps it a lot. It still never really tastes like coffee. Oh, God, no. It still falls. <sighs> Fleming up, man. My mouth is like responding to it still in a smoking, very okay. unhappy way. There's a special place in hell for whoever invented this one. Well. Ooh, that's nice. I just had mine. Man. There's certain whiskeys that hold the smoky sort of flavor really, really well. Tullamore, I feel like, is one of them. Like, you can do, like, I don't love Tullamore by itself. I mean, except for shots. Usually, if I'm going to use Tullamore Dew, it is to uh, mix it with stuff, which is, to again, totally fine. I've got a couple of, of whiskeys that I do like on their own, and I don't need to do anything to them. Um, no, like, some of them taste fine with rocks. Some I don't even need that. But, like... Tully is one that it's like, I don't really like it by itself, but like with a little bit of the fa the black walnut uh, bitters and this like smoked cherry wood, it's really good. Back to the skull. Let's pull another one of these fucking things. Oh, cool. An espresso martini with oh. bay leaves. Bay leaves. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that they meant Baileys. <laughs> probably Baileys. It pro yeah, probably means Baileys. But... The fact that it was written bay leaves like that also leads me to believe that the server double checked and was like, you mean bay, you, bay leaves? Bay leaves. And the customer doubled down. Maybe I'll try it both ways. Oh, God. Both of them get two ounces of vodka. There you go. Half an ounce or so of Kahlua. Kahlua. I need to get more Kahlua. I had some. Okay, we need one ounce of cold brew concentrate for both of these. Quarter ounce of simple syrup, just a scotch. And you'd think that would be enough. But wait, there's more. Yeah, add a little. Guy over here. Oh, okay. I'm going to add the some bay leaves. leaves. I guess I'm just going to crumble them up and put them in there. And hopefully, like, the shaking will do something. And then we'll do a fine strain on, on the out of that. And then over here, uh, I'm just going to do, like, a half an ounce of bay leaves. Right. That's, like, the, that's a normal espresso martini like i feel like there's nothing weird about this espresso martini this is almost step by step how we make it at our uh at my at my bar except for we don't it's a more of a restaurant we don't actually have baileys right now so it's like we use milk but i mean that's just, that's how we make it it's like a hundred percent step for step <laughs> how we make the espresso martini it's good uh, the other guy which I think is gonna kind of turn this into a mudslide, really. So that'll be nice. And it's time to shake. Boom, boom. Don't break it. People really like our espresso martini. Who drink? Strain our Baileys. Boom. And this is our it's Baileys. It's still very pale. Version. Probably should have double strained that. There's a few bay leaves in there. That's all right. Well, which one do you think is going to be better? I know my money's on the bay leaves. As tradition holds, I should garnish this with some coffee beans. Bloop, yeah. bloop, bloop. And over here on the rotating gyre, <laughs> what is this guy? Badoop, badoop. That really completes it. Okay, here we go. Add bay leaves. I don't know if they're making much of a difference. I don't think they would. Nice. I just don't taste... don't bay leaves like usually like the reason that you put them in something is to like, it's when something's cooking and like the cooking aspect is what makes the 
flavor happened. Play a pretty good espresso martini, actually. Uh, I, I can't complain about that. Maybe there's a slightly herbal component to it, but yeah, it's fine. I think you would have to do an extraction, which no bartender Ooh. is going to do in the five minutes that you give them. No, yeah. not I in mean, the, the weird, initial make. But like, how wrong are they? I don't know. This if you have it pre batched, it's different. I think that's what they were actually going for. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I prefer the bay leaves. Really? Nothing could have prepared me for this result. <laughs> What is that taste? I don't know. I don't like saying it's things freedom. taste like chemicals because everything tastes like chemicals. Everything in your world is made of chemicals. But it tastes weirdly fake or something. I don't even know. Huh. What is Bailey's supposed to taste like? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Because, like, when I make them, like, we usually, again, we do, um, like, vodka, Kahlua, coffee, a little bit of milk. I don't use, and um, chocolate bitters. We add some like chocolate bitters to it. We used to add coffee bitters, but then we don't have those anymore. So we've been using chocolate bitters and it actually like is really tasty. Um, but I, when I make them for me, I usually don't put any uh, milk in there because milk is not my best friend. So, you know, you don't have to, but I think it does taste, and maybe, and maybe it's because we use milk instead of Bailey's. That might actually be a huge difference now that I'm thinking about it. Because Bailey's Irish Cream is okay. I've got a different Irish Cream at my house that I will use in coffees and stuff. It's been a minute since I've actually tried Bailey's. I mean, it's kind of got a chocolate component in there, but, like, I'm not going to lie. Compared to the clean bay leaves, uh, <laughs> espresso <laughs> martini, it just has a much cleaner coffee flavor, much brighter, much <laughs> better balanced. <laughs> I guess if life makes you choose between bay leaves and bay leaves, go with bay leaves. I, I don't know what else to say. It's not, people are gonna be like, oh Greg, you just don't like things that taste good. This not, this is sweeter, because this is a plenty sweet drink. They're both very sweet. Hello, will do that. This has like a fake chocolate flavor jammed into it. Eh. I mean, it's kind of grown on me, but like, that first I think if you like Bailey's, like, you'd like it. immediately an inferior drink. Yeah, and it actually has like a really unpleasant kind of like turn towards its end. It gets real uh, burny. Maybe you so should check your expiration date drink, on your Bailey's, bar, dude. Parlance. Yeah, I don't know. Surprises. The customer was right, I guess, but weird. I love coffee. It's an important part of my life and daily ritual. And that's why I'm so happy that Trade is the sponsor of this episode, because Trade is super cool. They help me discover new coffees all the time because they've got over 55 awesome roasters making all kinds of coffee, and they ship it straight to my front door, roasted to order. And as much as I love coffee, I do find that picking new beans to try can be overwhelming. There's so many species. Mm. You have to have a go to a good, roasts, a good and place and for farms it. And I used to go to Baltimore Coffee and Tea when I lived there. That place was lit. Oh my God, it smelled so good in that effing store. Like, it was amazing. Um, and they had so many different types of beans, and it was all just, like, sitting there ready. Like, you could look at each one, and they were willing to, like, grind stuff up for you, and, like, all the teas, like, they would be willing to, like, put stuff together for you in the store. It was so cool. I miss... I wonder if that place is still around. I used to have a friend who worked there, and they would bring me tea a lot. <laughs> I was like, they would just tell them what teas I wanted, and they'd just bring me little sachets of tea. Uh, that place was great. And again, it just amazing smells as soon as you walked in the door. And all of that, well, Trade maps your specific preferences to hundreds of different flavor profiles and uses that to pair you with coffees that are perfect to your taste. It's part art, it's part science. I think there's a dash of machine learning and a lot of industry expertise all tossed together so that I get all these fun little surprises in the mail. And I find something enjoyable at every roast I get like this uh, Star Hill Stout Blend, created especially for Star Hill Brewery in Charlottesville, Virginia. Oh, oh, that's very interesting. That's kind of smoky. I was not expecting that. That was the most pretentious coffee tasting you'll ever see. Maybe oh. not ever, but that you'll ever see me do. <laughs> oh. Oh, toast moment well right then. So here's the thing. If you love coffee and want more of it, you should go to drinktrade.com slash how to drink or hit the link in the pinned comment or up here in the corner to sign up and get $15 off of select plans and get your first bag of coffee free. And now back to the show. Mmm. Tastes like, what is that, barbecue or something? That's wild. Interesting. Yeah. It's uh, Pisco Sour. No, Pisco. 
It's what it says. It says Pisco Sour. No Pisco. What are you wanting? All right. So I'm going to start with an ounce of lemon juice. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that a Pisco Sour without Pisco, it's going to have a really hard time not being terrible. So we've got like, our sweet It is cocktail. always kind of weird when we have our specific cocktails and people want something like the Crimson Petal, but they want, instead of tequila, they want it to have... Um, they want it to have vodka or something, or we've got a drink that uses a Georgian wine, uh, Georgia the country, not Georgia the state, um, but it uses a Georgian wine in the drink itself, um, which really levels out some of the sweetness of the drink. And so people will be like, try to ask for it without the wine. And I'm like, I can do that for you, but it's not <laughs> It's not going to be good. <laughs> like the wine really does help. And if you don't if like, look, we'll make it for you with the wine. If you don't like it, then we'll make you it without like not a problem. But like, it's like, it's a core ingredient. And like when people ask for something without one of the core ingredients, I'm like, I, okay, but it's no longer the drink you ordered. You're just making something up now. It's not this. It's not the same drink. It's totally di different. Power. I think we need some water. I'm going to shorten my pour. So normally I would do two ounces of alcohol. I'm going to do an ounce and a half of water, just because we need to have some volume in there. Like I don't see how you can get around that. But I also feel like there's no flavor in the water, so I don't really want. I don't know. It's only a half an ounce of difference, but in my brain, I'm like, yeah, that's that's a good instinct. It's also one of those things, too, where, like, some of these receipts, the server might have come up to the bartender without writing something in and been like, use this. You know, like, they, there could be things that we're not seeing um, on the on on the receipt because they could be like, don't use Pisco, use blah. You know, like, you know, there that has happened to me sometimes where it's just like um, things have gone through the receipt, something some weird things have happened with the printing of the receipt and so it's like um no i know it's like use the lavender martini but we don't have like a button for club soda or ginger beer so use you know then we have to go up and tell the bar to, you know something like that one egg white let's hope i can do this i always hated this part you can use aquafaba aquafaba the does the exact same thing and it's vegan Get some ice cubes. We also have, uh, there's also bitters they make that you can put in that foam the drink. So you don't have to worry about aquafaba either. There you go. Like, strain. Because the aquafaba you have to is. replace Enjoy every glass. two days or something. There it is. The Pisco Sour, no Pisco. Hold the Pisco. Let's, this is going to probably just be boring. It's going to taste like lemon. It's just too sweet. I don't know what to say about it. It's boring. It, it tastes like, um, like lemonade, frothy Sprite, if you're being generous. Now, I will say, I didn't because it was asking for a non-alcoholic drink, and technically there's a little alcohol in our Angostura, but I don't do this kind of a drink without a little doodah of Ango on the top here, and maybe even a little swishy swirl. But, swishy um, swirl. I bet it'll be a lot better. Yep, now it's a lemonade <laughs> with a little bit of character. But it's not good. It's very hard to make good non-alcoholic cocktails that are like one-to-one -one replacements for alcoholic cocktails. You can easily yeah. make great drinks that don't have alcohol in them, but to make a non-alcoholic Pisco Sour that tastes anything even remotely like a Pisco Sour, it's a, that's a real uphill battle. That's not gonna yep. be easy. And frankly, it's hard. this one is a failure. It failed. It helps, I think, if there's like a like a, a mule or something or a margarita something that's got like a really really strong taste outside of the alcohol so like you can do a non-alcoholic margarita with like the sour mix like use a sour mix and a lime and like you can add a little bit of like simple syrup in there and like there's some things you can do to it to make it still taste kind of margarita esque or adjacent tequila has a very strong flavor so it's not going to be quite there but things like a moscow mule vodka doesn't really have too much of a strong flavor so you know as long as you've got some like lime juice and ginger beer you're probably okay like it will kind of taste like the drink you're trying to make it taste like um 
we do a couple of different types of mojito right now is like we got like a passion fruit mojito and like a key lime mojito that like um do taste like the drink you know they still you can get it with or without alcohol and it tastes almost the same like some there are things you can do (laughs) that make it taste really good and you know it depends on the drink there's certain drinks that are really easy to do non-alcoholic versions of and there are some that are not Although I will say, people are like, do you have any non-alcoholic cocktails? I'm like, yeah, sure. We've got two on the menu, um, but just give me a flavor profile and I can work with that. Like, I've done lots of little, like, juice sort of style drinks, too. It's like, we can do stuff for you. We can make you a mixed drink that's different. Like, I'll do, just tell me what you want. Like, I'm not... I'll do it. Uh, back to the skull for another... Customer's always wrong. Uh... Woodford Reserve and milk. No! You better like uh, a little bit of this milk punch. Ernest! All right. Well, but no. A funny drink because you usually start with the ice. And there yes. it goes. Two ounces of Woodford Reserve. Apparently that's very specific. It's very important for this drink, the Woodford Reserve milk. Well, it's milk. probably just like they had a list of things there that they could goes. ask for and Woodford is the one they went with. Bar spoons of simple syrup. Couple dashes of Angostura. Okay. Give that a big stir. I guess I'm gonna try to do a float of milk on this old fashioned. Oh no, it's just gonna cascade in. Sure, there you go. The milk old fashioned. Get a garnish in there. Okay, part of it is I can't drink milk. So that that's a part of it is that I cannot drink milk. But also, oh look, it's curdling. It's curdling. Oh, no. And again, I'm barely drinking an old fashioned. Like, this is, <laughs> you know, it's fine. But yeah, yeah. Usually for old fashions, you do pour it over ice. I often will do it in like a, another glass that's got like crushed, crushed ice in it, essentially. Pour it over that and then and like give it a little stir just to make sure it's actually cold before I pour it over the big ice um, with a strainer. But that's just what I do at work. But this looks gross. One delicious Woodford Reserve milk old fashioned. Ew. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. That milk really brings out the bubblegum notes. That was extremely <laughs> bubblegummy. And bananas? Wow. <laughs> I did not expect that. I really, honestly, my last thought before taking that sip was, this isn't going to affect this very much because it's just kind of thinning it out. It's it's not a huge flavor component milk, you know? It's not going to do much. No. It made a big difference. It added somehow bananas and bubblegum. And I don't like it. <laughs> no. At all. No, 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 no. And like cereal notes. It really oh. brings out the cereal notes from the bourbon. It's got a lot of... Breakfast so green, I, I guess I, I get the that. Milk, that makes a lot of sense. Bourbon is corn. Like I said, corn green. Pops. Corn pops. Plus milk. Maybe that's just breakfast. A little orange action. Orange juice, right? What if we put coffee in it? Maybe we're on to something here. Maybe okay. This is how you okay. Make the breakfast he's, of champions. He's slowly bringing me back around to the possibility here. <laughs> Add a little bit of Kahlua, add a little bit of coffee. I do, cause I, I use, I do like, if, if like oat milk and uh, liquor and Kahlua. Like you can make some good stuff with that. So I'm, go- I'm like, okay. You know, it's a bourbon old fashioned with milk and an orange twist and it some coffee. Is oh, that still- curled it. And uh, maybe that'll be the, the, we'll call it the breakfast of champions, right? That's the breakfast of something. It doesn't help it. Also doesn't hurt it. It was bad before, it's still bad now. So. Yep, What's I'm not difference? surprised. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> not Gremlin sound yeah, effects. It was, it's a terrible drink. <laughs> it doesn't look good. Thank Ugh. you, customer. You were wrong. No redemption. All bad. Terrible. Terrible! Back to the skull. Once more into the breach, my friends. 
This is a like Tito's Old Fashioned. Sure, I'll make you Tito's Old Fashioned. Whatever. What a stupid drink. Okay. Badoosh. Tito. Boop, 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 boop. That's right. We're free pouring now. I get to that That's point. That's a lot of simple. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I don't free pour. Look at that. Crystal clear. Tito. That's also why we have like, like there are all of our syrups and stuff. We have them in the little like squirt bottles, essentially. So you can just, you don't have to have a go gaping hole from which the syrup pours forth. And sugar. A couple dashes of Angostura. We're not gross. You're gross. Get your mind out of the gutter. And pull this twisty. Zip. There we go. One Tito's old fashioned. I want to preface this explaining why it's stupid. The purpose of an old fashioned is to elevate the defining characteristics of the spirit in your glass. We're elevating nothing. Yeah. The defining Tito's characteristics is... of vodka are that it doesn't have any. Cheers. Yes. It's easy to put into almost anything because it doesn't have anything. <laughs> Twice nothing is nothing. Like I'll tell you what, it's a great vehicle for delivering the unadulterated glory of Angostura bitters. <laughs> because that's all it tastes like. It just tastes like yeah, like it makes sense. Cinnamon, allspice, mace, vanilla. Okay, sure, fine. I can't put my finger on the the myriad secret ingredients of Angostura bitters. It is a glass of silence. It tastes like <laughs> Ango secrets. <laughs> I love that. Ango secrets. In an art gallery where you're not allowed to speak. <laughs> and golf is playing on the television in the background. Has a little bit of an orange note from the orange twist. Right. It, it, well, honestly, he was describing those like it doesn't sound like it's going to be awful but it doesn't sound like it's going to be good like you have like old-fashioned like you know it just doesn't sound good i'm trying to understand what is the motivation behind ordering this what is it do they think it's like low-cal because like i know vodka and soda is like Maybe. oh the diet drink but like it's not by the way <laughs> it's, it's like the, the differences between this and uh an old-fashioned made with bourbon are minute Maybe they just don't like bourbon, but they know that with the Ango, it's going to look a little bit like a real old fashioned. That could and be it. You know, they it could think cool that they're and, doing something. You know, maybe that's what it is. I can't possibly understand it. I don't get it. They, they think they're doing something with it is really what they are. And I think maybe they want to have a conversation about it. I don't know. Because like, again, it doesn't sound like this is there's much of anything to this drink. It's just vodka maybe it just makes it easier for you to drink vodka maybe you want vodka but like drinking vodka by itself it can be tricky like i like a tito's with a bit of lemon myself but i also am really like when when it comes to like straight liquor i usually go with something that's pretty close to straight liquor because i don't want to worry about you know, too much sugar or like weird, st weird stuff going on because that's what like causes the hangover. I think uh, something to do with the sugar. So I'm just like, just give me just the liquor. And if I don't like the liquor by itself, add some rocks and like a little bit of lemon juice or something. Like just you know, just tiny things to make it palatable. But like, I don't know. No, no idea. Back to the skull. Here we go. Skull. What do we got? We got ginger ale with a splash of olive juice. What the fuck? <laughs> Fine. Ew. Lovely. And now for the finest. I hate olive juice, juice though. Oil. I'm from the part of France that's in New Jersey. <laughs> you can tell by my accent. I'm gonna take I a just, sip. I like ginger room, ale. I actually really like a nice ginger ale once in a while. I like ginger ale too. It's a real nostalgic too. flavor for me. This was the, oh, you're sick, Greg? You're homesick? Here's some ginger ale. That's supposed oh. to make you feel better. Ginger ale was for me was like, oh, you're hungover, Lauren? Here you go. And in some ways it does. Olives, yes. the. The we didn't famous, have a lot of ginger ale uh, at my house when I was good a kid. Bed we had Fresca. Fresca is the was the drink my mom liked. So Fresca is Fresca and Diet Coke were the sodas that spent most of the time at our house. And I was okay with that because I didn't really like soda. Just in general, there weren't very many sodas I liked. So <laughs> like it was fine. And then and then I got a little bit older and realized you could put alcohol in soda, and that made them all infinitely better.
except for that I still refuse to touch like orange soda or root beer or Dr. Pepper. <laughs> I won't touch him. But other things. Fellow for ginger ale, right? Nothing goes better. Fresca's than great for if your margarita's too enough, strong. There we go. Or like. Call that two splashes. What's a big glass? That's that's a that good one for like, that. Um, you know, you're not margarita's supposed just to, too I much. I genuinely enjoy these angry little guys. Nom, 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 nom. I don't like they're olives. They're tart. They're salty. Love olives them. are nasty. I think they go good with anchovies. One Gino, ginger and olive. Just what I wanted, salt water in my ginger ale. Yeah. You could achieve very much the same effect by adding salt to ginger ale. This was obviously a joke. They were ordering this for somebody at the table and this was to fuck with their friend, right? Like. Oh, it's gotta be. Know. The olive juice in it. It was a bachelorette party. That sounds right. I think that the olive juice is sitting on the bottom. <laughs> Yep, that was a joke. It had to have been. That's a fun. It's funny. It's like a drink that makes you thirstier. But What's not that, for customer? that drink. If there's anything in this episode that's going to make me puke, it'll be that. <laughs> not that it was like, oh, it's so bad, I'm retching, but like what that salt is going to do in my insides in the next hour. <sighs> I believe there's one more on the skull. Oh, here it is. It is the Long Island. <laughs> <laughs> Long Island iced tea, no sour mix, no Coke, substitute sugar free Red Bull. <laughs> no sour, no lemon. No like, I had someone order a Long Island for me the other day, but they didn't want Coke, they wanted pineapple juice. We did not have pineapple juice, so I made it with mango. We have weird stuff at my bar. Actually, the reason we don't have pineapple juice right now is because people just weren't like, none of our um cocktails like none of our house cocktails are made with it and people usually order house cocktails and if they're not ordering the house cocktails they're ordering something like a negroni they're not ordering a lot of um like french 75s or something they're not ordering stuff with pineapple juice so it's like we had some and the busser kept drinking it so the busser was the only one drinking the pineapple juice um so we stopped having it in the house because it's just like you're not paying for it. You just keep drinking it. No. <laughs> and, like, we didn't go through enough of it. So, like, like, we would open, like, one of the little cans, but, like, we just didn't use it for anything. So, but anyway, that was a interesting one. And it's like, and we don't have, we don't have sour mix either. <laughs> ah. We have hard liquors. We have a couple of syrups. We have things like Coke, Diet Coke, ginger beer tonic water club soda like it's a it's a limited cocktail type thing honestly um i've been trying to get sour mix but again we don't do too many tequila drinks we don't do many margaritas so like the margaritas we do we just simply do with like lime tequila a little bit of triple sec sometimes we'll put in like uh, a little bit of simple syrup or a little bit of lemonade or something to give it that flavor but it's a very simple simple drink like we do keep things relatively low-key huh we just don't have anything that we need sour mix for like it was the first time anyone at this bar has ever ordered me a lot long island from me first time ever and we just use lemonade for other things no coke red bull sugar-free okay uh, do these fit in? They do. Great. Boom, boom, boom. Three quarters of an ounce of vodka. Vodka. I want three quarters of an ounce of rum. white rum. Three quarters of an ounce of Kilo. Uh, yeah, we'll use the Cuervo. Okay. I'm going to use this Cuervo. It's not silver, but it's what I got. Mm, I, I was like, oh, we're not using silver Cuervo. Three quarters it of an ounce really. of that stuff. I need three quarters of an ounce of gin. <laughs> Three quarters of an ounce of triple sec. Triple this particular sec. drink you want the very worst. Hiram and Walker. <laughs> triple sec. Then money can buy. And that's it. Normally yep. now you would use sour mix and Coke. We don't have but sour no. mix. We cut that out. Sour mix would be lemon and simple. If this says no sour, I'm assuming it means no simple, no lemon. Okay? None that's of That's a good assumption. No Coca-Cola. Nah. -uh. No. And I think that's what they're trying to do. I think they were trying to get rid of the sugar. 
I think that's the the idea here. Oh, Red Bull. makes sense. Give this a good stir. I didn't like that noise. It's a bad it's noise. Really Red Bull. Some people think that this is a trick that your bar spoon was invented to do, pouring down the side of it. It's not, but it's a happy accident of the fact that way back in ye olden days when blacksmiths were making bartending tools, blacksmiths had to twist any piece of square stock they came across. They just had to, they were compelled. <laughs> they didn't know how not to. <laughs> they had to do it. The smell of Red Bull. It brings up so many memories. It brings up the memories of driving across the country with my friends in three days. It brings up memories of drinking vodka Red Bulls at Shampoo and Nocturne in Philadelphia. It brings up um, mostly those two things. It doesn't bring up a whole lot of other things. Red Bull gives you vodka <laughs> life. <laughs> oh my God. That's unholy. Ah, it tastes like Robitussin or Dimatap. Oh, no! I think it's Dimatap. <sighs> it has that, like, it's a little angry in the throat. Not, because cough syrup's not super duper sweet. It's very sweet, but, like, the flavor is, like, metallic or something. This tastes like cough syrup. <sighs> Some bad shit right here. Oh, no. No, it, it, you get, like, um, bubble gum. Like it smells like bubble gum. You emit, you have sensation of bubble gum when you get close to it. Oh, God. Ugh, it's such an angry flavor. It's so angry. But like frosted tips angry. We're getting into like fundamental questions about the fragility of democracy. When we imagine <laughs> sharing oh, no. a government with people who intentionally drink this drink. Like I don't... It's an irreconcilable difference. I don't know how we can make this all work. I don't either. That sounds bad. <laughs> He's making gremlin like, noises again. We're carbon-based life, and this would be like meeting an alien that's based on like sulfur or hydrogen or something, like some other basis, it's an entirely different uh, uh, chain. It, it, uh, it, they're not on the carbon chain. They're, they're something else, you know? It would be like telling you, like, oh, me, I eat plastic. That's what I live on. I have plastic for dinner, plastic for breakfast, plastic for lunch. I mean, don't we? Don't we kind of already? Aren't we, like, full of microplastics? Like, all the time? It's delicious. I love me some good plastic. Because this is very exquisitely bad. It's about the worst thing. I don't like this cocktail. As you can plainly Sally. see, the skull is empty, which means that we're all done now. Ooh. And I've had some bad drinks. I'm sorry, and some man. that were kind of fine, but that weren't great. I mean, just terrible ideas here, I guess. Eight drinks. There was eight drinks in this episode. Wow. Didn't even realize that. If you've had a great time watching this episode and you want to share some bad receipts with me, the best way to do that would be to be in my Discord, which is available if you're a member of my Patreon. You'll find a link to that down here, up here in the corner. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be back very soon with another episode of the show. And until then, here are more of it. Look at them. Look at all these things. So many. Click at them. Clickety, 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 clack. Excellent. Train goes down the track. See you guys next time. Bye. Anyway. Good night. All right, I might still do the um, Dungeons and Dragons one at some point, just because I think that sounds fun. Um, and I gotta, at some point, you know what? It would be really fun. You know what I want to do at some point? I want to make the drinks with him. Like I want to, maybe I would. I would have probably have to have somebody. Uh, I would have to like see what drinks are in the episode, or like have somebody else come go through the episode and like get the materials but i think it would be fun to make the drinks with him and also just like exploit oh and yes this is i agree or i disagree with with his uh statement here i think that could be fun um that's a that's a thought that's a thought for the future anyway thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it like i said i always like these episodes um <laughs> And I, I, I feel like at this point I'm mostly doing them for me. Uh, but that's okay. That's allowed. Um, I hope you did enjoy, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.